is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. It's Alex here. My voice, not my picture. I mean, I could show my picture, but we're going to go to a uh, an interview right now. But on the other side of that, in about 25 minutes from right now, citizen panels, discussions about well, just about anything. And we go until midnight tonight. That's midnight, Eastern Daylight Time. So no matter where you are in the world, just accommodate for that. And uh, you'll get an idea of, uh, you know, well, well, what it's all about, okay? Uh, and and if, you, if, if, it's, if you hear it, you know, if it's like, uh, well, right now it's like 10.05 on the East Coast of the United States. If you can accommodate for that, no matter where you are in the world, it's live. If it's not that time anywhere else in the world, then this is a recording. But who cares? It's still a lot of fun to listen to, and... So's our first guest who's up tonight. Okay, here's what we're going to do. We always do this with this guy. We always, like, just call him cold and uh, see what he has to say when he answers the phone because it's always something special. Let's see here. Here we go. We're going. We're dialing. Come on. Start dialing. Okay. Let's see. Can answer, I'm sure. So you're walking down the street and you see a chick, she's blowing me in the park, and I put my dick out there and stuff it down her throat. She blows me, then she says, Well, you love me in the morning. I said, Nah, well, no, I don't even love you now, you dumb bitch. And that's the way it is, film at 11. The comedy of Walter Dice Cronkite. Hello. Hey, hey, how are you? Well, see, I, start, nah, I, st- hey, now, I, I started recording you already. Because See? you know you, you know you say funny he, stuff when he, I he, he, I answer the phone riffing. You've heard of enter laughing? Well, I answer riffing. It, uh, that should be the title of your biography. I answer <laughs> riffing. Answer riffing. <laughs> answer riffing. <laughs> Actually, I was going to call it. I may never be in the parade, but I sure had a damn good view of it. A uh, phantom book. <laughs> 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 Ladies like and that. gentlemen, it's it is the uh, the wit, the wisdom, the joie de vivre. Hey, how is that, huh? The, well, has, the has been over the hill witticisms of Stephen Old Man Varicose Veins Pearl. Yes. Uh, uh, what up? What, what, it, up, what up? We it, rocking today. In my has beens but never were tour, I call upon <laughs> you. Actually, you know, uh, it, 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 I never ever said, I always said, you should never base your career or the success or failure of your career on other people's success. You know what I'm oh, saying? Oh, that will kill you. I base, yeah, I base mine on Perry Kurtz, then I feel great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Perry Kurtz, the finest comic in America. His name keeps coming up. As- you know, I, I have to tell people that Perry Kurtz is a byword for, if you look it up, his name up in the dictionary says, worst comic in America. Yeah, like a carbuncle that won't go away. It's just uh, been there forever. As long as there, as long as there, <clears throat> excuse me, as long as there's an assisted living facility that has amateur night, that man will work. You know something? You got to give him credit. I mean, by now, most people who had faced the, shall we say, lack of success that Perry Kurtz did, <laughs> and I hope he doesn't hear uh-huh. the, hear this because then he's going to call and want to be on the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all you need. And that's all I need. Okay. I, I think that boy's time has come. He's due. You know, you, you <laughs> like say, well, Alex, you should have him on because if he's that bad, let's hear how bad he really is. And that would be entertaining. Uh, there you go. I don't think or so. Or just go, just go to YouTube and say, I think I'll pass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you find, you can find Perry Kurtz on YouTube, can't you? Oh, yeah, you see him on, uh, what was that show? America's Got Talent. He gets gonged, like, within 10 seconds of, uh, it's, it, it's horrible what he, he does. He, he was on America's <laughs> Got Talent? Some... Yeah, is that the show where Howard Stern is a judge? And, like, well, that well, he was the, the judge, other. yeah. Yeah, I watch that show now that Howard isn't on it. 
Uh, and oh yeah, I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't watch any. I just saw but he got like he, gone, gone, he, he did some rap and it fell apart quickly. But. They, they they hit the buzzers, all of them, within ten seconds. Or oh, something? They, when they saw, yeah, when they saw him, they pretty much they they let him do like a one half a verse of a rap song, and it was it was all over. A rap song. <laughs> he was expecting to win. Perry, he came on wearing a glittery jacket with that Rumpelstiltskin body of his, and he starts doing some rap, and whoo, it's all over. Perry so Kurtz. It, it, wait a minute. It wait crashed minute. before it got off the runway. Perry Kurtz does rap. He tries. A lot of people do. It's like the it's been the in thing for thirty years, and it's horrible. Yeah, yeah. I just, and by the way, I just watched all four episodes of this thing called The Defiant Ones on HBO. Do you get HBO? No, we don't get nothing. We quit watching TV. I stopped paying the bill after Letterman, a year after Letterman went off. Oh, okay. Well, anyway, the thing is, we get YouTube. they got this thing on HBO called The Defiant Ones, and it's about Jimmy Iovine and Dr. Dre. Uh -huh. These are the guys that, you know, at, in the end of their career, they had these incredible careers, came up with the Beats uh -huh. headphones and sold it to Apple for two point uh, $3.2 billion dollars. Billion with a B. Hello. Yeah, it made uh, Dr. Dre the first ever uh, hip hop rap guy, whatever, a hip hop guy, uh, to make a uh -huh. billion dollars. Jeez, amazing. Uh, well, and, well, well, they came up with a good but, invention. But the so documentary is about their lives and so on. And um, mm -hmm. I don't know what point I was trying to make here. I don't oh, know. Oh, we're yeah. all, we're oh, yeah. old. I think the point is that the roses will oh, be in blue I, I see. You, you, you and they'll said, be over us. You, you said you didn't understand hip hop and crap like that, and I, my answer to you was, if you watch this thing, you'll get some idea of what we missed. No, uh, okay. You know, <laughs> it's like a whole history of this stuff. Uh -huh. You oh, know. Oh, I, I got to hear it from the beginning. Uh huh. Look, lucky me. Yeah, but it, it goes on for. I just watch a, I just watch a Howlin' Wolf documentary. <laughs> I just get beaten on it with the wine bottle and wrote a hit song about it. <laughs> Howl of Wolf, yeah. Anyway, so mm -hmm. uh, what, what music are you listening to these days? Anything new? You listen to any of the kids? Uh, yeah, new. <laughs> new from new is like around late 1959 for me. So, uh, no, I don't know. what I don't listen to new stuff. I, I'm just stuck with all the cool dead guys so and gals. So you don't, you don't, you don't pay attention to any of the newer stuff because here's the thing that happened to I've me. I've heard it. You hear it. You know, being being in the, the everyday modern world, you hear it here and there. Cars passing and everything. I don't like hip hop. It doesn't do a thing for you. Um, God, God bless for freedom of speech and freedom of expression. Go do your make all your hip hop records, you kids. Just get off my lawn when you're singing it, or I'll shoot your kneecaps off. Well, and uh, yeah. I just isn't all the great songs have been written, all the great jokes have been told, except mine, of course. All the great movies have been made, and all the great TV shows have been done. So <laughs> I'm just lingering right now. I don't know. I, I don't know if I agree or disagree with you. I mean, I I've never been a fan of hip hop. It, it, let me put it this way: when you get older, and I am older, um, mm, I know the feel. when I was younger, I knew all the music. I knew everything. I knew every song that was out. Yep. I knew. I, I could tell yep. you uh, because I played it uh, on an album what track a certain song was on the album, uh -huh. you know, and on what side, because they had two sides in those days. You and then, tell the length of the song, 419. Hey, he's right. At some point, I stopped caring and listening to the music. I don't know Me when too, that yeah. was. And I don't know if that happens to everybody. It's happened to you. It happened to me. Uh -huh. I bet if I asked anybody like oh, Bobby Slayton or I asked older people I know, when did you uh -huh. stop listening to music? They say, ah, I, don't, I don't know what the latest music is. I think yeah, music yeah. is something that informs your history when you're younger. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. we, we measure. Yeah. Don't you measure your history by what songs you were listening to? Oh, certainly. I remember, you know, I remember what was going on. I, I'll watch a clip of the Beatles on the Ed Sullivan show. I'll know what was going on in my life then, or I'll hear a song, and I'll remember where I was the first time I heard it, or another time I heard it, or what was good in my life, what was bad in my life. Yeah, it was like a, it's like a soundtrack to your life. Yeah. And I stopped listening around, I don't know, when, about 80, 85 or 83 or whatever. I stopped following the modern stuff. So what, what, I just got into older stuff. Do you remember what song you were listening to the first time you got laid? <laughs> uh, let's, I think it was the two bar tapes. Why didn't you come over, you motherfucker? Uh, was there music? I'm trying to think. The first time I got laid was 14, and then after that was like 39. But uh, the first time I got laid, it was in camp. It was in a sleepaway camp, and there was no music playing. There were 
we we did it around the back and uh, the the. Uh, what do you call it? The uh, the bunk there with a uh, girl from across the lake there, yeah. and uh, there was there were crickets. <laughs> I remember okay, it was Buddy Holly and the crickets without Buddy Holly. Really? The really? Yeah, they, it was see, outdoors. Yeah. See, I don't remember what the first song was when I got laid, but I do remember one of them that I played when I was trying to get laid was, uh, and this this is really dating me. Moon glow and the theme from Picnic. You know that. that <laughs> Do you know what I'm talking yes. about? It, it was a, that's like, a that's fusion. Old, that's old fashioned getting laid. That's like William Holden and martinis and stuff. What's old fashioned about it? This was fusion music. Yeah. <laughs> they took two songs and they played them in counterpoint to each other, and it was in the movie Picnic. And I think maybe that's when I first started really making out was in a car at the Marin Motor movies. Uh, and that's the uh. only reason you bought a car in those days. <laughs> Uh, uh, to the movie Picnic, when that song came on, uh, you could really you could get you could get some nookie to that song in those days. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I got I made love to there are two albums by Edgar Winter, one called Entrance and one called Jasmine Night Dreams that are really good making out music, kind of jazzy and just real melodic and just you know you can listen to it or you can just let it play and do your business. So I like those <laughs> and those do your good. business. I see. The bid, yeah, Stars and Stripes Forever was not good to try to get laid to, by the way. And not anything by the Mahavish New Orchestra and Anvil Chorus, I tried getting laid to, and that didn't work out too well. Yeah. <laughs> so we, you, can, you can get laid with Russian girls or communist girls, the Anvil Chorus. Yeah, well, what, 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 you know, that was uh, the what, what couldn't you get laid to? Uh, let's see, any... Any, anything by the Mahavishnu Vishnu Orchestra. Yeah. Uh, that fusion shit. And um, the Alvin and the Chipmunks, they didn't do too well. No, 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 and, no, uh, no. The Chipmunk song de- and, definitely uh, is not uh, getting Edward laid Thurston's music. Speeches didn't work either. So what? That, that, that tried with that one. But Which one? Everett Dirksen's speeches. Various, uh, uh, oh, yeah, there was an album of Everett on, Dirksen's speeches. Huh? All right, come on, baby. Aren't you in the mood? Uh, I played my Everett Dirksen speeches, and I tried to get laid to those, but uh, didn't quite work. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So, I mean, okay. I, I, I uh, let me see here. What, what, what did I, when I was younger, what did I get laid to? The songs I would play. I don't remember what songs I would, 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 would get my juices flowing. Uh, but but Moon yeah, Glow and the theme from Picnic. Usually there was, the lights were down and there wasn't nothing playing. So. Well, you know, <laughs> one of the reasons Moon Glow and the theme from Picnic got me. Boy, is it my aging, dating myself. People are going, what is Moon Glow and the theme from Picnic? Look it up. Yeah. You know? What's a picnic? Yeah. yeah. It was the song in the movie Picnic when William Holden has a very sexy dance number with uh. Kim Novak. And I remember when oh, I was a kid, I Novak, I used to jizz over Kim Novak. Oh, I love me too. I love Kim Novak. And, I love Kim. And he, I still love her, even though she's 112. Well, I met her years later. She did my show, and uh, oh my god, she, she still from, had uh, that. She all, uh, st- still had that voice. You know that sultry, oh, sultry yeah. voice. Yeah, sure. Oh, sure. That face, and, that voice, everything. And everything I, was I so point, hot. you know, I pointed her out that if I said, you know. Uh, uh, a screen is screen queen, you know, uh, uh, the kind of beauty that Hollywood could only make. It was it was Kim Novak. Now a lot uh, of people might not find her attractive. I just found her the sexiest thing ever. And you know, I loved her so. Yeah, I loved her so much that the first real girl I ever had a major crush on was named Kim, and that was one of those. Gorgeous, but that was, there was one reason. Kim Kaplan, and, 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 rest in peace. And, and when I and when I went home, okay, uh, uh, wait a minute, I'm going to went home. When I um, uh, uh, went home after seeing like Vertigo, uh, I had to wash my pants. You know, I mean, it was. <laughs> but in pic- you up this, you would. in picnic, she was so sultry. Jeez, oh, yeah. almighty! Without doubt. Without now the doubt. T- the horrible part about it was she wasn't that good an actress. In fact, did it really matter? <laughs> it, it, that's right. It's kind of like, you know, I met this girl and we she fucked me, but God, she doesn't have a great intellect. Who gives a fuck? No, you know. No, but she she she's 
she save your soul and your life like she did with Frank Sinatra and the what is it? The guy with the man with the golden arm. Yeah, like, to, in order to get laid, a guy will put up with anything. Yeah, it's just amazing <laughs> what we'll put up with. Uh, and and we put up with with uh, with uh, like if you're going out with somebody and she goes, you know, I work at the beauty parlor and I do nails and you know some nails are really and and you're and even though it's the most boring, soul wrenching thing she's saying, if she's <laughs> hot enough, you will go, wow, that sounds like interesting work. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. I was with a girl once who was so hot. She was. I had to agree with her. She said, "Don't you think Hitler got a raw deal?" Oh yeah. yeah <laughs> That's it, how good looking she it, was. It was vastly misunderstood. Vastly misunderstood. You know what? I you, know, you you mentioned that, and I remember watching. Uh, who was it? Um, I guess maybe it was Jerry Springer in the days when he used to do issue oriented stuff. Oh God! What was that? The nineteen fifties. Yeah. <laughs> And I, um, <laughs> fuck. he had <laughs> on, he, he had on Nazi girls. In other words, these girls <laughs> who were like, were bitches for the Nazi party in America. You know? Ah, Nazi chicks, straw-haired women on the next Springer show. And I'm staring at the screen going, I'm getting a fucking boner. <laughs> for a girl who would want to turn you into a bar of soap. Yeah, exactly. What's wrong with this picture? Well, let, let, I hope she washes me with her vagina on her vagina. You know, <laughs> I just you know, and I, I I said, what's with me? I'm a Jew. Uh, I should hate Nazis. <laughs> anybody that professes Nazism, and yet look at me. Poof. You know. Well, I- some of those shows are set up because uh, they, they could have easily just been actresses if they, if they were. Because uh, he once had one with the midget KKK. <laughs> Little people coming out, KKK. Come on, right on, right on. You knew that wasn't real. So, yeah. so not all of those shows are, you know, reality TV isn't too real. So you yeah. never know. Yeah, you, you don't know if it's for real or not. But The midget KKK. It, don't miss it. We bring a very short cross. Yeah. yeah. Midgets are fun. Yeah, they yeah. are. Unless they're running through your legs throwing punches. Other from that, they're a lot of fun. Yeah, I mean, you know, um, what, what, who was it? Billy so, Barty let, was cute. <laughs> you wanted to, you wanted to put Billy Barty to your teeth and let him suck it. He was so cute. Well, now you got to explain Billy Barty to people. You know, when you um, talk <clears throat> about, I don't know what it means. These, these, these references, I have to tell people who they are because they're being <laughs> left out totally. Billy Barty was one of the famous movie and television midgets. Best yep. way to put it, right? Yeah, yeah, um, sure. You saw a midget in the movie from like the 50s on to like the 90s. It was probably him or Billy um, Curtis. And I'm trying to remember the one that was in uh, in The Wizard of Oz that started the Little People Association of America. Jerry uh, somebody. Uh, or awesome. Yeah. And then my favorite one, and I don't know if you remember this midget, he was maybe, the, I think, the funniest midget in the business. <laughs> or, uh, my, uh, you know something? We're being incorrect here. It's little people. Oh yeah, little people. They don't like midgets. Okay, don't call them midgets. Yeah, gonna, don't call them midgets. The little people. Little people. And little I, folks. Um, With big hearts. My favorite midget, little person, dwarf. Actually, there's a difference between dwarfs and midgets. By the way, midgets are proportionate, yeah. and uh, mm-hmm. uh, uh, dwarfs have a normal torso and short legs. Oh, okay. And these weird little hands or something, you know. Yeah, but they can they pack a punch to yeah. watch out. Yeah. So anyway, so uh <laughs> so a dwarf or, or a little person. Yeah. So so um let me uh, let me see here. So my favorite, I mean, he was a dwarf, was Johnny Poelo. Do you remember I don't know who that is. Johnny Poelo and the Harmonica I Rascals? Probably... No. Look them up on on YouTube, Johnny, Johnny Poelo, Poelo okay. and the Harmonica Rascals, and okay. he would do things like okay. they would Play come the out and they would start playing their harmonicas, and he would have a harmonica he was playing, and then he'd like do something like bite one of them in the leg, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and I love Johnny Poelo, and I think that's the most obscure. I think I win the race for the most obscure uh, dwarf reference yeah, of all time. I don't know who that was. So yeah, 
Billy Barty, easy. He was like, did he play with Spike Jones? Few, a few other people. He, he was everywhere. Yes, he was in a lot of the play. He was enough hysterical. It was one where he played a, a little person, Liberace. They put the wig and the jacket he, on. Yes. He sat down a little toy piano. He, he was hysterical. He did the impersonation yeah. brilliantly. I think it's on YouTube. Barty was check very that funny. out if you can. By the way, folks, you uh, you know you can find this show on YouTube, and you can tell your friends. Listen, they're talking about dwarfs and midgets. There you go. Got to talk about something. <laughs> Can I, can That's I, the motto of the show. Got to talk about something. Can I tell you something? Can I t- t- reveal yeah. something about me that I reveal very few times in my life to people? I uh, get hot at female dwarves. Oh, really? How yeah. about that? Yeah. <laughs> you like when they go up on you. <laughs> now, you see, that's not nice to say, but you're right. Uh yeah. <laughs> I, for I some once reason, off a dwarf. He stood on three what? Tokyo phone books and punched me in the knee. But I gotta tell you, I've always liked um, short women. For some reason, I uh, you know, shorter the better. Five feet, man, I'm going crazy, right? Oh my god, but yeah, yeah. So I've never been able to figure <laughs> that one out. So, so obviously, a midget or a dwarf really turns me on. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I prefer the midget actually because she'd be like, proportioned. She'd just be a short person, you know. Yeah, you want them. You want them, You don't want the head to be too big. Yeah, and what was, you never some guys and, get off on and, heavy. And the shortest yeah. one was what Vern Troyer. I think is one of the shortest. Uh, uh, I think he was a midget on record. Mini me. Uh huh. From the oh Austin, yeah, he's a little. He's a real little guy. Yeah, from the Austin Powers movies. Uh, little guy and a big big. Star. Oh, and how about what's his name? Uh, the uh, the the boss plane. The boss plane. The plane is coming. Boss uh, fantasy. Oh, Hervé. Yeah, Hervé Villachase. Yeah, Hervé Villachase. Yeah. yeah, he 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 he's dead now. I think. Oh, he's good and dead. Hey, he shot himself in the chest. He was going to shoot himself in the head, but he was too short, boss. Yes, boss. But anyway, he was um, Hervé Villachase. Oh, oh. He was actually an artist uh, in France. Really? Yeah, in France. Huh, I did not uh, know that. Uh, however, know that. all his paintings, it was just the bottom of the canvas because he could yeah, Hey, yeah. look at that. Mona Lisa's tits. See, I'm even, making, okay. hey, great, I'm even making, I'm even making insensitive midget dwarf jokes. There you go. What do we care? We're old. But he, uh, he was, That's the new model. He, he, did very, he did very well. I mean, you know, uh, he did okay until he off himself. He probably wasn't very happy. The person, first time but, uh, I ever saw him was in a movie that was produced and starred. Um, oh, what was that group? What was the group? They were oh, uh, Danny Elfman's group. What was the name of it? Do you remember? Uh, uh, Oingo Boingo. Oingo that, Boingo. Or? Yeah, it was a movie. I knew called, it. I knew something about it. It was a movie, a black and white movie called Forbidden Zone with Oingo Boingo, and that's the first time I ever saw uh-huh. Hervé Villachez in a movie. Wow. Yeah. So. How about that? Put that in your pipe and smoke it. Put that in your pipe, and I'm about to put something else in my pipe and smoke it. But I got to tell you. But I, 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 you know, he was, uh, he was really, uh, um, he was quite successful. You know, he did Fantasy he Island, and he was in the Bond movie, Man with the Golden Gun. Yeah, yeah he was so. in, uh, was I think, the greatest with Henry Winkler when they tried to make but, Henry Winkler. But a now movie. we have uh, a dwarf working who doesn't want to really ever play a dwarf. He does, in other yeah. words, he wants to play, and that's Peter Dinklage. Peter Dinklage in the Will Chamberlain story. No, he, no he's in you know on Game of Thrones, and he was in, uh-huh. uh, in in any number of movies. He's a good actor. He's a very very uh-huh. good actor, and he doesn't uh-huh. ever want to play small. He doesn't want to play he, like oh you know, hey here comes that dwarf, right? Yeah. Or <laughs> you know, little dwarf jokes or whatever. He wants to play yeah. serious roles as a dwarf, and uh, it works on Game of Thrones because you can't have a thing like Game of Thrones that takes place in a fantasy world that doesn't have a dwarf. Yeah, you know? <laughs> I gotta have dwarves. And they hired Otherwise it's not they, fantasy. They, they hired the best acting dwarf in the business. There you go. Amazing, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's see here. Any, are, a lot of things, but he still has a short resume. <laughs> And then there was the midget that was on uh, Seinfeld. I'm trying to remember his name now. The, the, oh, I know. It's Kramer's friend. Yeah, I forget yeah. his name, but he, he was real good. I think he was on Night Court. He played this badass with, uh, district attorney, too. He's a very good actor. He's a very really good actor. Good and he's very funny. Yeah. And uh, yeah. he works He works a lot. You see him all the time. Yeah. You know. 
I'm trying to remember his yep. name. I wish I could remember his name, folks, because we're giving all these other people. Yeah, no, I know who he, I know who you mean, but I, I don't. Yeah, I don't know the name yeah. either. I don't, I'm trying I like to think of any other people's names. I think we've run out of dwarves and midgets in movies. Uh, okay, now it's time for what two season <laughs> for really tall people. Really tall people. Hey, how about that Will Chamberlain boy? Well, I'll I tell you, boy. When it rains, he's the first to know about it. One of the tall ones. I actually had him on my show here in New York. Uh, was uh, I'm trying to remember his name now. Played Chewbacca. In the Star Wars movies, he was uh, very, he was very tall, <laughs> huge. Uh, uh, well, so there you have it. There you have it. At least a tall person that we mentioned, so that tall people yeah, are represented. Keep, keep equal time, equal time. Yeah, we represent. I once I, I once saw Will Chamberlain in the mid seventies at a bar, a disco, or something on Long Island. I, I I look, I see this guy, and his head is touching the ceiling, and it was a high ceiling. And I looked down, and I thought he must have been standing on a box. I looked down, and all his feet are touched on the ground. That guy's really tall. That's Will Chamberlain. Holy crap! It is. Yeah, yeah. He was big. Yeah, yeah. yeah he was. He was a real Watusi. He's saying. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so what do we learn today? We learn that Alex likes to fuck midgets. He loves to fuck midgets. And that's oh, about boy, it. Long time, but, short time, mostly short time. What did we learn from you? Not much, as usual. <laughs> as usual. I don't know much music after 1977. Hey, you want to do this again next week? I'm with you, Daddy. Wait. Anytime, anytime. Ladies and gentlemen, he's loud, he's proud, he's fast on his feet. He's the ever popular Stephen Pearl. Esquire, thank you. Thank you very much. Have some Cheetos. <laughs> This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Uh, thank you very much to Stephen Pearl. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, and uh, he'll be on again next week. And uh, you know what? We, we don't get as many people watching when we're playing an interview, where which I have to do with some of these people because they don't have the ability to uh, do video and then when i do somebody like uh, will durst we get tremendous amounts of people uh, because you can see them and the same thing with bob rubin because you can see him so i'm hoping that uh, i wish i could go out to california and teach bubs and uh, <laughs> bubbles larry bubbles brown and, and stephen pearl how to use uh, how to use skype I'll teach you how to use Skype. You simply go over to Skype and download the program from Skype.com, and then you just install it. Very simple to do. You just answer a couple of questions, first name, last name, uh, your email address, and uh, what you want your ID to be. That's it. Simple. Easy peasy. And it doesn't cost you a penny, so it doesn't cost you a cent to call us. So uh, why don't you get Skype? And if you've got it already, we'd sure like, some, uh, like you to call. Uh, we have a whole just a bank of callers that call this program on a regular basis. Oh, wait a minute, let me turn the uh, Skype on. So, who call this show on a regular basis, and we love them, but we would love more. We'd love to hear from people that we haven't heard from before. So, uh, our our number, uh, if you want to call us, it's simply an ID on Skype, and that ID goes uh, in an amazingly small. Uh, 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 address. It's GabNet Live. This is GabNet Live. When you go up there, it says, uh, you know, who do you want to call? You put in GabNet Live, and it will it will dial us up. And if you if you don't know how to do that, you can actually turn on your Skype, go over to GabNet.net, and on that page, there is a um, a button that you can push that will automatically dial it for you. Okay. And then have your camera on and have yourself ready to go. And then you can be like a lot of our other people. Now, it's a little slow night tonight so far as uh, traffic is concerned, so far as I can see. But I'm hoping that all of you uh, people out there who normally call will call and start calling me as soon as possible. Because we would like to get going here. Um, because I have nothing really to talk about, there, you know. News been pretty sparse today. Nothing much happening of, of great import and note. So um, uh, I don't know what I can I can say except fuck Donald Trump. Uh, that's about it. Um, supposedly last night. Uh, oh well, here we go. Uh, he's always the first to call now. Mike is always the first one to call. I don't know why he 
he likes to call, but he does. And there he is. There's Mike. Oh, wait a minute. Here comes Brian. Oh, Brian is adding to the group early on. Okay. Hello, Brian. How are you? Hello. Yeah, where are you? In, uh, you're in your car. See, you can see the... You can't... Not in my... It's a long night, so I'm not in my car. I'm still on the clock. Oh, you're still on the clock. Oh, you're in your truck. No, uh, van. Van, yeah. or whatever it is that you deliver. You deliver medical things like blood and hearts and uh, kidneys, right? All kinds of shit like that. Yeah, all kinds of shit like that. The parts that, uh, that some of us don't need anymore. Uh, but anyway, he's in, so he's there. I wish we, there was some way we could light your face while you're driving, but then that would blind you and you wouldn't be able to see the road. Oh, well, there we go. That's nice. That's cool. So what are you, what are you hauling tonight? Uh, I'm actually making a pickup for, uh, from a uh, pharmacist after hours to take to a person. Oh, really? Oh, wow. You, you know. Drug dealer. He's a, yeah, he's a drug dealer. Uh, hey, look who joined us, Mark. I didn't even, I didn't even, uh, oh, yes, I did see you, and I clicked on it. I'm going batty here. Uh, hello, Mark, how are you? So oh, you had to bring up Forbidden Zone. Oh, boy. Oh, 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 yeah. Well, I was talking with, uh, with, uh, with Pearl, and uh, I, I have all these friends, like Pearl and like Bubbles, but especially Pearl, who like vague references, you know? Uh, and uh, I feel that I really leave the audience out a lot of the time. Uh, well, I, I was following you pretty well up until the uh, the Harmonicats. You didn't never heard of the Harmonicats, huh? No, I had to really like. Oh yeah, there was a midget in that. Well, of course, Mike Jones and Billy Barty. Yeah. Uh, but the funny thing about Billy that I remember him, he was in Weird Al's movie UHF as a television cameraman who was very, you know, all the shots, of course, were up shots. <laughs> Funny. And there was poor Billy lugging this huge video camera, you know, that was obviously a prop, but he was really good in that. I think, we, yeah, I was trying to remember uh, a, a midget who became very popular and, and actually uh, founded the Little People of America group. And now I remember, I think his name was Marsden, Jerry Marsden. No, Billy. Bill, Billy something. No, no, but not Billy Barty. Sounds familiar. Yeah, Jerry Marsden. He was one of the uh, Lollipop Guild in... Uh, in well, if you want to see a really good Dinklage movie, The Station Agent. Yeah, I hear it's great. I, I have never seen it, but oh, I hear he... Dear, in fact, didn't he get nominated for an Academy Award for that or something? It wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. But uh, I'll tell you something. There, there's something very interesting. Getting back to the Forbidden Zone, I got to know. Okay, well, explain the Forbidden Zone. This is a, an independent film, black and white, if I remember correctly. And uh, it, it stars Oingo Boingo and uh, uh, Hervé Villachez is in it. What? When they were known as the Mystic Knights of the Oingo Boingo. Yes, the, oh, how, how, how accurate but, of you. The best way I can describe it, it's a punk Yiddish theater musical that's the best way i can describe it really? i don't know if richard elfman would agree with me on it but danny elfman well uh, richard was the director his richard brother. was the director his brother yes yeah and that was his brother's doing basically it was danny's first soundtrack work and what i think pushed him towards becoming oingo boingo but anyway the, the, what's interesting when you brought up really Chez, i got to know one of the performers in the movie yeah. uh, one of the Kipper kids and apparently it was a real hands on movie everyone did everything and Herb painted a lot of the set pieces yeah I it, mean I heard that Herb he was a comic book artist actually in France really yeah, and I've been like, really? You know, I want to know more about this, but I can't seem to find any information. I just, about I just heard the general term uh, uh, "artist" used to describe his work in France. Um, but uh, you know, it um, uh, that film, "The Forbidden Zone," when I saw it, I thought it was a, a masterful film. But I don't uh, can you? <laughs> huh? Well, it, can you can you find it anywhere? I bet you can go. I bet. I bet it's on YouTube. What do you mean? Go buy the copy from Richard. You know, uh, 
I mean, he's been trying to get... He's getting the sequel done. He did a Kickstarter on it that got the money for it. Really? Yes. How old is that movie? It has to go back to the 70s, 80s. Came out 80, 81. Yeah. I, and I remember seeing it. Oh, God, what was the theater in the East Village? I think the Elgin or something like yes. that. That doesn't even exist anymore. Boy, we're but, leaving everybody out in this conversation. And that's okay by me. You know? Yes, Mike? Uh, you said the, the movie was from between 19... Couldn't you look that up under, uh, uh, what do you call it? You look under films, uh, the... Uh... Yeah, you go to IMDb and you put in Forbidden Zone and it'll tell you what year it was on. You know. Yeah. It's like Wikipedia, people who feel left out. Yeah, there's this wonderful thing yeah. called the Internet. Yeah. And an even more wonderful called individual initiative well there's this thing called, yeah there's this thing called imdb which put leonard malton out of business you know every, every year i would buy the leonard malton movie book because it was always updated to the latest year and anytime you wanted to know any fact about any movie you would go to malton right all of a sudden imdb comes out leonard who's a good friend of my friend shecky's is kind of out of work they're not publishing that thing every year now or at all, for that matter. He could have upped his ante. He could have released YouTube videos and like made them interactive and razzle dazzle people and shit. Them up yeah, well, what he should have done was he should have been IMDb before there was an IMDb because he had all that information already in a book. You know, every year he would update this book, so it was kind of kind of strange. As the saying goes, it's widely used in my family. As the saying goes, yeah. you snooze. You lose. You lose. Yeah. Oh, here comes Jeff Stein. Let's see here. Let's add him to the crowd. Uh, hello, Jeff. How are you this evening? Good. How are you doing? Good. Uh, we've got, let's see here. We've got Brian and we've got uh, uh, Phil and we've got uh, Jeff. Jeff, is there any way you can make your camera a little more so we can see more of your face? We just, you kind of look like Kilroy was here. Yeah. Yeah. How about that? Yeah. Now you look great. You look terrific. Thank you. Um, Got to move around. But anyway, uh, you know, I, we were we, we were talking about uh, about midgets, and that's one of my favorite topics. I don't know why. I just love the topic of midgets. <laughs> there was a movie that came out with, uh, with, uh, with little people. Something to do under the rainbow. Uh, over the yeah. rainbow, it was called, over and it's, and Chevy yeah. Chase starred in it, and. It's a story, I'll tell you the true story, okay? It was a story about they brought a bunch of midgets out from New York to be in The Wizard of Oz. And there was this guy, and he had an agency where he represented midgets. So when they needed midgets for The, uh, for, uh, uh, the Wizard of Oz, uh, they contacted him, and he rounded up every midget he knew. And he put them on a bus... And he sent them out to California, where they did the movie. And they were called the Singer Midgets. In fact, if you look at the credits of The Wizard of Oz, it says uh, featuring the Singer Midgets. Um, and he, uh, he was hated by these people because he just, you know, he was, an, he, was a, he was one of those, you know, he was an agent who was taking advantage of people. I mean, obviously, because he was going out, he was getting what we would call an... Uh, unemployable group of people and taking advantage of them by putting them in movies and taking a large amount of money from them. So he put them all on this bus and the rumor has it, the story has it, he lived on Park Avenue and and before they left New York City, they all got on the bus They got, and they said, here, would you just go over to this address first before we leave and just park in front of it? And they drove over and parked in front of it and then they, somebody went in, rang the doorbell, and said, look out your window. And when he looked down, in every window of the bus was a little midget bare ass mooning. <laughs> uh, that would have been a good picture. Huh? That would have been a good picture. It would have been a good picture. That didn't make it into Over the Rainbow. That's a small... What? Go ahead. You know, what were you going to say, Brian? Uh, I was just going to say, uh, oh, fuck, I'm losing my train of thought here. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, I, oh, yeah, I guess that's a small price to pay, though, to uh, profiteer off the uh, shrimp-dicked cocksuckers. 
But let's not be nicer than that. You know, I, I talked about my love for midgets here, especially for midget and dwarf women who uh, I have the hots for. <clears throat> I call myself a semen slurping cocksucker, so, you know, yeah. at least I'm consistent. Yeah, well, yeah, but you are a semen slurping cocksucker. That is correct. Yes. Uh, yes, uh, Mike, your hand is up. That's what, that's, that's what you call the revenge of the uh, little people. Yes, of course you would. But they, they still got swindled, though. Well, I, 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 who knows, you know, but they, and, and it, when they were working on the film, uh, Judy Garland was quoted as saying that it was weird because they were always kind of when she'd turn around, one of them would be staring at her. Uh, they they all had this fixation on Judy Garland. Uh, but th these are all, of course, rumors, much like yeah. much like all the facts in the Trump administration. Yes, Tim. Yeah. Tim. I mean, Tim. I'm Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, yes, it. Jeff. Tim? The, no, Jeff. Je, je, I know, <laughs> Jeff, Jeff, Jeff. Oh, my goodness. I'm trying to make a look. Um, oh, you know what I haven't... <clears throat> one of the things I know about, right? About yeah, yeah. Midget. Yeah. <clears throat> In Brooklyn. Yeah. At Coney Island. Yeah. And maybe uh, some of the people who've been there as kids... Yeah. And Cody Allen. Yeah. Phil, I'm thinking maybe he's been there. Yeah. So there used to be a ride that you went on, and it was like you rode on a horses. It was like a race of all the horses. And they were mechanical horses. Uh, yeah, it was just called the steeplechase. Steeplechase <laughs> Park. What, 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 what uh, uh, Mark, what was it called? Steeplechase was, Park. Yeah. Yeah. And at, if you've been on that, at the end of it, you get off of the horse, and you kind of come downstairs, because it was off. It was quite like the second floor or something. It was quite higher. Yeah. So I think it was on the top of the roof. Yeah. Remember? And anyway, so you come down, and as you walk through, you walk through a whole bunch of midgets. Really? Who would make jokes of you. Oh, really? You had to walk by. And all your friends could also watch you come by and, and look ridiculous. And the one thing is people would give them as gifts, little uh, packages of uh, cigarettes. S packages of cigarettes? Yeah, that was like a, a big gift. Instead of giving them a, a dollar, you'd give them... you give the midget cigarettes? Yeah. A, a, you know, a box of A Luckies carton of Luckies. It cost like 22 cents. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah, cigarettes yeah. were really cheap back in those days when you could get hooked on them. That's... Why would anybody smoke today at the cost of cigarettes? I, I, the last I heard, $11 a pack. Do you know how many cartons you could buy when I was growing up for $11? <laughs> Weren't they like it was a, a quarter a pack? I, I I smoked for a little while and I quit when it turned to fifty cents, and you get Marlboros for fifty cents today. You get some sort of you know spirit or something. <laughs> you know, it's not even a real cigarette. Yeah, but I mean, it, it, it's uh, let's see here. Yeah, they're, supposedly it's eleven something like eleven dollars a carton. I wish we had somebody here who no, still $11 smoked. a pack. But, huh? Uh, excuse me, eleven dollars a pack. Yeah. I mean, how many come cartons on. are in a pack, mm -hmm. or how many packs in a carton? Um, there are twenty. Oh, no, 20. there are ten. Ten. And so it's a hundred and ten dollars for a carton of cigarettes. Yeah. Well, that's why people were going out to Long Island's the Indian reservations where mm -hmm. tax cigarettes. Yeah. And, yeah. It's cheaper to get addicted to cocaine. <laughs> well, you know, this is why this is why things that are illegal become illicit. It becomes an illicit trade. I mean, how much higher is the cost of cigarettes going to have to go before there is like bootleg? And there probably already is there a, are. a black market. Not, as long as the wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, uh, Jeff was trying to. When I was like a teenager, that was one of the ways to get cigarettes. Is there was some way you could buy them. 
for half the price, and 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 they were not. You know, I lived in New York, and and so they had to have a, a New York State ticket yeah. on there, stamp on it. Yeah. And you get them illegally, which somehow somebody brought them in from North Carolina or South right. Carolina, whatever they yeah, were exactly. produced, and you get them for half half the price. Because well, didn't have the tax. I, I think you know, I think the, some of the tobacco producing states, it's still cheap. Yeah. yeah or the cheaper. government uh, finds that people will accept a cigarette tax. Uh, certain, you know, certain people, if there's not a lot of people who drive, uh, you know, like in the New York City or San Francisco, they love a gas tax, you know, because it's not going to really affect them directly. Affect them. But this is uh, where Phil and I may once again have uh, ideological agreements. Because, uh, <laughs> And we do. Oh, We've had it. We've, I've voiced them in the past. Yeah. And, and this is one of them in the sense that, uh, uh, yeah, it's not going to affect me until it hits home for you. Like a tax on sugar, a tax on porn. Who the fuck knows what else they'll try to tax. Yeah. Well, how about taxing? I mean, this is where we're going to disagree, Phil. How about taxing the rich? <gasps> how, how about the only ones? Oh, fuck to, you. How about they're the only ones that are paying any substantial taxes? You know, uh, the poor don't pay tax. They're exempt. Oh, gee, well, gee, uh, how, how did they get away with that? That's, that's unconscionable. The, the poor don't pay taxes. Yeah, well, you know, that's just the way it is. Yeah, well, maybe the rich should do something about hiring them, and then they wouldn't be poor anymore. Yeah. Well, Instead, what the rich the do these days, just... what the rich have done recently is they've come around to... Uh, uh, cutting out the working guy you know and whenever a company's in a little bit of trouble what do they do they fire people there, there's a saying uh if you work for the classes you sleep with the masses if you work for the uh masses you sleep with the classes uh you Wait know a minute, that's what you said the first time no if you if you work for the classes you sleep with the masses yeah if you work for the masses oh you, you sleep with the you, no but you said the classes thing twice all right so you know you draw a circle in the middle I, of the room no, you throw it you have all the these air. wonderful sayings but they don't amount to shit yeah well it's true you know, you know uh, if uh, you know if you're going to wait for the rich people to hire you uh, to get a job you're never going to get ahead you you got to come up with something that people want all and, I'm all uh, I'm saying is that why is it that when a company is having problems, they don't fire the executives; they fire the working people at that well, company. Those, those companies don't Take last. Take a step further, Alex. Wait a minute. When they have profits, when they're reporting profits, why aren't they, uh, you know, distributing that with their, uh, you know, peon well, work? See, I was always taught nothing gets done until something is sold. You don't need a bunch of people at the top to account for stuff that you don't sell. You don't need a bunch of people at the top to to no, sit there but, and collect money. You're just going to go out of business. No, but uh, but but they they fire. The, you know, to me, if a company is doing badly, uh, you start firing from the top down. You don't fire from the bottom. You don't let go from the bottom up. That's correct because you need those people to make the products yeah. and services. Yes, but they get they fire them anyway. That, that's a that's an that's an issue with bad management, and there's a lot of bad management around. Why do you think people don't go into stores anymore and they buy on the internet because they don't want to talk to anybody? You know, they uh, you know they they they're not going to get any good information anyway because most of these people don't know what they're talking about. Uh, 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 they're uh, they're one of those people. There are some companies now that are trying to get your business and are working their asses off to do it. Uh, Mark, I don't know if you've noticed this. Have you gone into Best Buy for any reason lately? Uh, Alex, I can't answer that question. <laughs> okay. But why? Because so we'll take this conversation point. between you and me off camera. Yeah, okay. Well, I, what I'm saying is I have a good feeling about Best Buy. Because I used to have a lousy feeling about Best Buy, and then all of a sudden it looked like they changed their method of operation. Uh, and uh, I found that, for instance, I could go to Best Buy and get Amazon prices. I found that if I wanted my TV set uh, delivered the next day, I'd get it the next day and they would set it up as opposed to getting a TV set on Amazon. 
Uh, and I found that I've had nothing but good things to say in recent years about my dealings with Best Buy whenever I've had a dealings with them. And I think that's because I think they wised up. Why would you deal with a geek when you can go to a genius? Uh, because those geniuses ain't no fucking geniuses over there to Apple. And I, I absolutely <laughs> hate Apple for those stores. And I'll tell and you why. What? What were we going to say? Is more about as a fashion piece, as something more practical. So, what can I tell you? Yeah, but the thing I hate about Apple is, you had all these stores for years that that kept selling apples and stuck with Apple, and you know were uh, in, in into into selling apples when that company was in bad shape. And the minute it got in good shape, it started opening up shows, uh, stores, and all these other places had to shutter. You can't find, you, it's very hard to find an independent Mac dealership any longer because of the so Mac it stores. The bar, the value added reseller. Huh? It's, it used to be called bars, value added reseller. Yeah. With the um, Apple retail became a reality. You know, the only bars that are left are the ones that do uh, internet and mail order, like Mac, uh, oh God, Mac sales and or places like that. I yeah. mean, there's still places out there that sell Mac stuff that's not the Apple store. Right, but they're online. They're online. They're yeah. not bricks and mortars anymore. But, what, but, but what the point I'm making here is, is that what Apple did was screw over all the people that kept them alive for years. And I can't help but think that if anybody wanted to sit down and say, you know, this is this is not good, this is not right, uh, that they have these stores and that they're they're you know they're they're putting all these other people out of business, I I just think there's something wrong about it. I think there's a, there could be a a, a large uh, federal suit against them at some point for these Apple stores, but nobody seems to because Apple still acts like they're poor, like we're the little company. And they're not, you know. So I, I, uh, I, I always resent going to the Apple store to buy anything, but that's the only place you can buy an Apple product now. Been seven years working for them, Alex. Yeah. Yeah, that was a hell of an experience. A hell of an experience. Why do you say that? Can you reveal any of it? Well, no. First couple of years were great because it was still Steve Jobs and Ron Johnson. The minute Ron left the company. Mm -hmm. What made that whole experience special just went out the window. It just became business as usual. Uh, it went back to Wharton School 101, how we run business. Yeah. Anything that was unique about it, no, no, no more. Yeah. Well, they, and, they, 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 you know, what they stopped caring about also were those people who were Mac adherents and who loved Macs, who were using them uh, through the years when they had bad times. That when they finally had good times, they were going fuck you to those people. Their, their practices were all fuck you. And uh, it, it pretty pretty terrible. You know, I, I've never had a great love for Apple as a company. It seems like the Apple products itself, there's more problems with it. You know, with what, Apple, Apple products? products? No, I, yeah. don't, I, don't, I, I have to disagree with you on that. You know, Apple makes a pretty fine, decent product. I've had, uh, I've had less problems with my Mac computers than I ever have with any other computer. And my iPad, I had the last one I had, kept going, kept going, kept going. My iPhone, I kept it for like three and a half years, you know, before I got the new one. What were you going to say, uh, uh, Mark? If it wasn't for Apple and more importantly Adobe, I would never have had the career I had. Yes. True. You know, and it, I'm not the only one. So I still, even though my circumstances of being departed from the company were uh, not exactly amusing, I still, I'm still i still loyal to them. Yeah. Um, and yes, I do see quite a bit of what has been coming down in the Windows PC line. Yeah. And they're, they're not staying still here. They have some pretty compelling products there. I'm not going to switch. Yeah. Who was trying to say something? Was there somebody there? It was Brian. It was Brian? 
Brian? No, I wasn't saying anything. You weren't saying anything. Okay. Uh, um, uh, uh, yes, Jeff. I'll say something, even though I wasn't going to. Um, I have some, uh, I have very good experience with Apple right now. Yeah. I used to have, uh, I was an Apple user when it was what I call way at the beginning. Um, and uh, you, you had to really uh, want to have an Apple at that point at yeah. the beginning. Yeah. You, know, you, had to buy, you had to buy specific components. And, right parts and software and you know it was uh, somewhat of a do it at home deal and uh, I know there were dealers but I didn't even know where the dealer was yeah you know, I'm not even sure how I, I even bought it it was kind of a, a strange world yeah yeah I, uh, we just had, and, we, we, and quite frankly I had to yeah. give them I had to give up on them because uh, they couldn't support all of them latest greatest software that i needed yeah so so you had uh, to get away from a mac and go back to a pc yeah yeah, yeah. for years and years and years and then and i'll tell uh, you i'll tell you that's still kind of true okay where where the mac is concerned but if you're like me and you edit video or you're a photographer uh, or you're you know uh, you're in the arts the Mac is the computer for you, and they keep up to speed on that. All the various companies, Adobe and, and Apple, for instance, keep up to speed on that. But if you want uh, the latest and greatest uh, uh, accounting program, you better get yourself a Windows machine. You know? See the replacement for the new Mac Pro? For the, uh, the garbage can replacement? The, you mean it's been around for three no, years now? No, it's brand new. Uh, they just they just came up with uh, uh, with a new one. With an, a new garbage can? Uh, I think it's a garbage can. No, uh, what is it? Uh, I, I it's like it's six a, quarter. It's a super iMac. Yeah, oh, it's, and just... it's unbelievable what they packed into it. It's also not cheap. I mean, yeah. it's 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 <laughs> but they're but it's like uh, everything in it is like okay. F this, we're, we're just making this an all-out, you know, monster of a, a workstation. Yeah. And I'm like, well, if I have a need for it, I'll, it's nice to know it's there. Yeah. You know? yeah, but how much does it does it cost? Six grand to start? That's the starting price, yeah. Alex, you know. But I think one of the configurations, this is like 24 core or something. It was just this insane amount of computing power and that's not even including the graphics system to drive like the 5k display yeah hey mark uh, does uh does it start out with like a six core yeah but yeah, yeah even that's ins but it, it it's just like this that's, is insane that's not that much more than what the six core was of the garbage can you know yeah. when, well, when I, you look I, at I have an eight core here my uh, my mac pro which i've had for years and years and years eight uh, really eight core yeah Huh. Oh, oh, that Mac Pro. Okay, yeah, the, yeah. yeah. Uh, the old oh, those one. Were just dual core? Huh? Those weren't dual core. Well, you could get dual core, but I bought an eight core. Wow. Yeah. And uh, but you know, I mean, um, uh, I find I'm, I got to tell you, I have found that I use like for this show, I use a Windows machine. I use it, and and if I were to do the same show over there on my Mac. It wouldn't look as good, and it would have, uh, for instance, the the new thing that I got. Like, I'm not giving up live stream because they're now giving their broadcast studio away for free, and I'm learning how to use it. But I can't do this show with it because I've yet to figure out how to get my Skype going through it. So th that's the problem I'm having with it. But I'm saying they don't do it for the Mac, as an example. And last night I called Jack's show. And uh, the picture looks completely different on Skype on a Mac than it does on my on my Windows machine here. Um, so uh, bottom line is, uh, uh, I, uh, I I I'm very happy with the PC, and the PC is spiffy and fast, and it uh, seems to have never had any major problems in operation and so on. So, what the hell, you know. Uh, so I find that today, if you want to buy a PC, 
uh, you can run. I can run all my Adobe programs on a PC, and you get you get a you get a good PC with a great a good deal of power, uh, and uh, you're going to be able to do everything you used to do. I use Adobe Premiere on there. Uh, I uh, I use uh, uh, the Audition program from Adobe, which I think runs better than it would if I. Well, no, I, actually, I'm doing it on the on the on the Mac. I'm sorry, but I can do it on the PC. It, it, it I just think maybe the Macs are overrated at this point. You know. You know, for what do you pay for a Mac Mini? Uh, for for 99 percent of the people, it's a great machine. The Mac Mini is what we use to to drive our network. 24-7, right. and I've never had trouble with it, and to be honest with you, except on a very hot day here, I never feel any heat coming out of that thing. But out yeah. of this Mac Pro I have on the floor, you can go back there and fry a fucking egg. How, uh, we, we have a, a Patrick with us, and he hasn't said anything, but he has a Mac, and you know what I'm talking... Is, is your Mac a, 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 a floor model or a desktop, or is it a... I've got two laptops. Yeah. And my older ones, um, you can't fry an egg on it, but it it, it gets warm. Um, the one yeah. that I'm on now, it it fine. Yeah. But the older one, yeah, it, it gets warm. So. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, uh, but the but the Mac Mini Mac, there's no, I don't know, I I don't know if it has any heat coming out of it. I know it does Very because it, sometimes it has gotten a bit hot, and I can hear the fans start going. You know, it'll rev up the fan if it if it. But for the most part, on uh, in cool weather, you can't you can't feel the thing, and uh, it it operates just like a Mac. It has all the power of a Mac, and I don't know. I've never used it to try and use Adobe and to use Photoshop and things like that. But I imagine they work quite well. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm just I'm using the suite, and uh, now when I originally uh, had the Mac. Uh, when I got my first Mac Book mm -hmm. Pro, mm -hmm. uh, I had uh, Photoshop, but it wasn't a Mac version. It wasn't. Uh, it was a Windows version, and I had bought it maybe a month before uh, I bought the Mac. So Adobe actually exchanged it with me, uh, so that I had a, a full install of uh, of the Windows version, even though my last one was an upgrade. Yeah. And uh, but on CC. I only use Lightroom anyway. You know, I, I don't really know how to use Photoshop, and uh, yeah. I never learned. Well, Photoshop is wonderful. Well, I mean, ask Mark. Mark, you're yeah. probably an expert at Photoshop, right? I've been dabbling with it for a while. Um, <laughs> it was a transition period when the high-end graphics that I was doing was based on PCs, but it was a graphic subset and additional pieces of hardware from AT&T Labs. And that's not including the software you have wait, to wait, buy. Wait, wait, hold on a second. Who's making all that noise? Is that you, Mike? I don't even know where he is, but boy, there was some. And I know it wasn't you guys. Anyway, go ahead. Continue, Mark. I'm sorry. Anyway, at Macworld Expo, this had to be 88, 89. Mm -hmm. I'm in Faneuil Hall with a bunch of other Mac people. Yeah. And... I'm crying over a beer about how much my soft, the next software update is going to go for. And the yeah. person next to me was like, you know, would you like to be in a beta program for something I think you might be interested in? And I said, yeah. And it was John Knoll. Really? So, I'll never forget this. Um, like two weeks later, I get an envelope, out tumble two diskettes. And there's a note that said, I forgot what, what function. Don't use this function. It'll crash it, but it's 80% there. We'll keep sending you the updates. Something called Photoshop. Yeah, yeah. And just that 80% was like 95% of this subsystem. Wait, where is like, all, wait a minute. Hold on a second, Mark. Where is all that noise coming from? I don't know. You know. Now it's gone. Huh, hmm. It's weird. Anyway, continue, Mark. I'm sorry. Yeah, so, and it was like, okay, do I continue with uh, this AT&T Labs software and hardware solution? Or here's something that's going to do the same thing, and it's going to be much cheaper. So I, I was all in with Photoshop from, uh, yeah, and 
that time, Adobe had this amazing piece of software called Illustrator that was changing the way we did graphics in general. Right, right. So, um, you know, that, that was a big, that yeah. was a big changing point. Uh, I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Mike? There's some kind of yes. noise coming from your end. Please don't move stuff around, okay? Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Cause it's, it's annoying as shit. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> How do you really feel? <laughs> okay, well, you know, anyway, enough about, I guess... You don't have to ask. Enough about computers, although most people who listen to us don't mind it because they're listening to us on a computer. Uh, but... Uh, you know, it's given a couple of people. I know Mark, and it's given Patrick uh, a profession, uh, and uh, especially uh, the Adobe suite has done that. And uh, it's given me the tools, uh, all the all the tools I really use here, except for the really on the air stuff like the broadcasting module and and Skype. Uh, all the graphics you see and everything I've done with some Adobe product and the audio that we have on every night is courtesy of a lot of times Adobe uh, uh, Audition. Uh, and it's, you know, it, so uh, the reason I have a Mac is because from a creative standpoint, it's what I need. But for doing this show and getting it out the way it looks on, on uh on Facebook Live, and it does look really good on Facebook Live, is because of a Windows machine. So, you know, they all have their purposes. Look, somebody's eating. What are you eating? Fresh strawberries from Salinas. Oh, ah, very. Morning. Oh, I, I'm envious. I'm envious. I, hey, uh, did, uh, uh, Phil, did you yeah. read this in your newspaper, local newspaper up in Hillsboro? Did you see that about that house? The one that seems like the place. No, the one that looks like the Flintstone house sold for two point eight million. It's two bedroom, two baths. Oh, it's is like, that the Adobe one off of two eighty? Yeah, they just uh, sold I've that. I've seen that for years. Yeah, they just sold it now for two point eight million. It's right. probably a deal down there. Mm. Well, oh th yeah, hell's cool. Well, yeah. Th thanks for sidetracking the discussion, Mike. Sorry. Yeah. Hey, I fell right into it. <laughs> huh? Yeah. And I, I walked right into it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, That's what I do. Uh, the, the um, um, what was I going to say? Now I forgot what I was going to, what I was going to bring up here. Ah, uh, boy. Ah, oh, fuck it. Ah, uh, uh, it's time for me to retire. I think it's, it's getting to be time. The voice is going... The brain is going, you know. Uh, It'll go a lot faster. You know, the, you, the, uh, audience, the audience is disappearing, you know. Uh, I, I just, uh, I, I, you know, it, it's going to be interesting the day I actually have to say I used to be a has-been, you know. <laughs> uh, anyway, did you hear who's running for Congress, Sen for the Senate in Michigan? Uh, yeah, Kid Rock. Kid Rock. Yeah, Kid Rock. Yeah. Yeah, he's uh, poised to run against Democratic incumbent Senator Debbie Stabenow. Like politicians write know. books during their campaigns, I'm planning on putting out music during mine, and it all starts tonight at midnight, Rock wrote in a message posted today. It's not a hoax. It's a strategy and marketing 101. No plans for an album or anything else. Uh, has been the usual norm in the music business or politics. Stabenow tweeted previously about the possibility of running against Rock, who has been an outspoken Trump supporter. Trump Ooh. Kid Rock is a Trump supporter. Boo! Boo! Uh, yes, yes. Wait a minute, he's a. I knew he was a Republican. Oh, but he, oh, but he's got to be running as a Republican, right? Yeah, because he's running against... Okay, so he's running against the Democrat. Rock responded to her on his website where he wrote, Senator Stabenow, I do not share... And I do share a love of music, although probably not the same kind. I concede she is better at playing politics than I am, so I'll keep doing what I do best, which is being a voice for tax-paying, hard-working Americans and letting uh, politicians like her know we the people are sick and tired of their bullshit. Are you going to tell me that this guy 
calls himself the working man. You know, ah. isn't that being a little... Uh, yes, Patrick. Actually, a lot of his music, I'm not a big fan of his, but a lot of his music does center around that type of blue-collar uh, working man idea. It Southern rock basically brought into the 2000s. I mean, it very much uh, what Leonard Skinner would have been or, um, you yeah. know, um, what the hell is his name? Uh, Steve Miller, that that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, only it, it, it's Southern rock and rap and he's from Detroit. So, you know, he grew, he grew up in the area. He knows where... When he was a kid, auto manufacturing was there, and it gone away. So, I mean, criticize him for political affiliation, but I think he probably got a better handle. Just like Eminem, believe it or not, those two would have a better handle on what the regular people would want than somebody like Donald Trump, who had never lived in a, a city in you know in a in a lower class or lower middle class area, and Eminem did, and and so did Kid Rock. Well, uh, okay, I'll I'll buy your argument on that one. Get alone on Kennedy on the Democratic side, a professional politician uh, who's grown up in an insulated bubble and out of touch with reality. Well, I mean, uh, uh, Trump grew up in an insulated bubble and lived in an insulated bubble and has never had any th uh, touch with the common man. And yet everybody's going, oh, he's the working man's president. He's going to change things. He's not going to do anything. You're just going to die in a hospital wondering why you can't pay for the best health care possible. You know. Uh, but I, uh, it, it just seems like, and whenever I hear a Republican say, you know, we're for the people. I, I've never in my lifetime ever known the Republicans to be for the people. And they didn't even, it was a time when they didn't try to identify themselves that way. You know, uh, it, it's, you'll never grasp this concept, but. Why, concept am I stupid? Of, no, the concept of uh, helping people better themselves. Uh, and uh, it may not be this generation, it may be the generation. Well, how do, you, generation. how do you make people better themselves, Phil? What, 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 what's the theory on that one? Yeah, you have them uh, work and earn what they get. Oh, well, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Where do they get these jobs? Well, it, the jobs may not be good ones at first, but it, you you have to you have to start somewhere. Oh, and see. just like the Chinese did it yeah. when they came to this country, uh, they worked hard, they saved their money, uh, they ended up uh, you know living uh, ten. Well, you live in this bubble, sudden, Phil. You live in a fucking bubble. No, hey, I've you know I've seen it. You know you, you, the the Jews that came to this country, they came with nothing. Uh, the Chinese, they they had nothing. They worked hard. They saved their money. I still they know some Jews who were very poor. Yeah, and and, made, and you know most Jews were very poor I, when they came, to, and uh, you know they were refugees, uh, and and you know except the ones that maybe came in the 1860s, but uh, in 1870s, but uh, you know there was there's still many 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 that. Uh, you know, had to had to start. Oh, so, out. so, so, what are you saying? What are you saying? The people, the, the people who are poor deserve it because they didn't do anything to get rich. No, they. You will get rich if uh, you uh, if you work hard, and it may not be you. It may be your children. Every, uh, oh well, uh, maybe you don't want to wait for that. Maybe you'd like it now. Instant gratification doesn't come to everybody. You know, it's, life's not fair. If life was fair, you'd have a job. Patrick be playing baseball, you know. But it's not fair, and uh, and, and so sometimes you got to accept that. And and it may not be you that uh, benefits. It may be your children, or your grandchildren. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, you know, that's it, you know where you got to go on it. Uh, just to derail the conversation, I noticed that Amazon is getting a dollar forty-six per box from the government as a subsidy. For every box they send out, they get a dollar forty-six. Sub what, what for? Uh, just, just that's their that's their deal. It was uh, an an analyst from Citigroup found that uh, that Uncle Sam uh, was giving a dollar forty six subsidy for each package shipped by Amazon. I don't understand it though. Why? What is the reasoning? 
uh, it's, it just happens to be a, a secret about the federal government's relationship with Amazon. And, uh, and where, did you read, where did you read that? Uh, this is in, uh, is this the Wall Street Journal? Wait a minute. Yeah, Wall Street Journal. The dollar forty six on every box they send? Every box, yeah. Uh, Why would and, the government give them that subsidy? I mean, what uh, is the thinking behind it? I know that you don't know because you haven't read the article. You just saw the headline. No, I've been, re I've been reading it, but uh, it's, uh, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's what the deal is. Uh, yeah, look it up. It happened to be in Drudge, but it links to Wall Street Journal. It and, uh, yeah, but I'm still well, trying to know, figure I, out. Just, uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. J Jeff, you're smiling. Oh, turn on your mic. Your, your mic, mic is off. Your mic is off. Yeah, Jeff? You're muted. Jeff, you're muted. Jeff? Uh, you're, you're muted, yeah. You just, you just, Unmuted. Okay. Yeah, what were you going to say? You know, this uh, source that Phil uses all the time when he really doesn't have much information. As well, you know, I, I did go, I found it at, at, what is it, Bridge or Gridge? Drudge. 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 And, you know, it's kind of an interesting uh, location of where they almost make fake ideas. But, well. What, what is this? I, I Wait, believe what you're saying. It must be. It must be true. Yeah, well, uh, you know, it just uh, seems uh, interesting what they're saying in the article. You got all these brick and mortar stores that are barely making it or closing, and you got the government subsidizing Amazon at a dollar forty-six a box. But what, uh, but what is the thing? Uh, undoubtedly, you have not bur buried down into the article to find out if this is true. What the thinking is uh, in the government, or what loophole Amazon is using to get that money? Uh, I don't know. It seems as though Citibank uh, discovered uh, some arrangement that uh, Amazon had with the U.S. government. And uh, no, no, I, I, Phil, you're, you're again. You're just, you know, you see a headline and you're seeing a couple of words here and there. Is anybody uh, online and can yeah. drill down into that article and find out well, why? Alex, it says a, a decade later. Uh, around 25% of Amazon's re revenue is coming from packages. Uh, and, uh, and it keeps their fixed costs. It's coming from packages. They sell boxes. Well, of course. We might put them. Well, they're big, though. Well, they're I'll tell you, big. I'm not throwing those boxes away anymore because they're worth a lot of money. <laughs> no, it's, there's no rebate on those things. But what's happening is for every package they move, they're getting $1.46 uh, subsidy. From government? Yeah, I, I is, don't. Uh, I'm probably throwing the government a big business because they. Hold, they hold on a second. Them. I got it. I got it. I got it. Amazon. Yeah, you got to Google that because he's probably subsidy. Uh, I don't want want to look at Drudge. I never will look at Drudge. I know he hates that fucking. Uh, Amazon. It's, it's Wall Street Journal. Oh, that's pretty rare. Subsidy. Right. Okay, hold it's on a, a second. It says I'm why not, the post office gives Amazon special delivery. Uh. Okay, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Amazon what received two hundred and forty-one million dollars in subsidies for warehouses. Uh, the government has given Amazon two hundred forty-one million dollars to build facilities they couldn't build anywhere else. Uh, that would seem to be something they would subsidize because it brings jobs into a community. Okay. Right. Well, I'm just talking about every box, you know, uh, uh, that moves. Uh, they get a buck and a half almost. Yeah. Why the post office gives Amazon special <laughs> delivery? No. Uh, yeah, why the government giving the billions in tax breaks to Apple and Amazon? I don't see anything here, Phil. And I go to news. Let well, that's why here. the post office gives Amazon special delivery is the article. So. Uh, oh, well, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Hold Mike, on a second. Gosh, so, the, so the headline isn't. That they're giving them a subsidy. No, no, but right under it, it says the Citigroup analysis finds each box gets a dollar forty-six subsidy. Oh, but, uh, but a subsidy sense. from who? Uh, from the un un Uncle Sam. No, the no, US no, government. no, no. It looks to me like they're getting a break in price on special delivery for from the post office because they're doing a bulk amount of business with them. 
That's no, what it. That, according to this. Well, that's what I think the story is, Phil. If you'll if you'll drill down and read it, it doesn't say that it's coming from uh, uh, from a savings. It it says that they're actually getting money uh, for uh, a, a subsidy. Is uh, uh, you know is here's money. You know they're subsidizing. It is a whole article in the Wall Street Journal. Okay. Right. And it is called Why the Post Office Gives Amazon Special Delivery. Below its cost, says... Uh, it's, yes, uh, but what I'm... S- don't you understand, for- Phil, what I'm trying to say to you? Is the post office has made a deal with Amazon that if they use the post office, they will give them a break in price on the delivery of items. Uh, yes, uh, uh, I, it's because you were in the dark. I couldn't see you that well, uh, uh, Mark, but you have your hand up. It's also, I believe, Amazon is a subcontractor for a number of government things as well. Oh. And uh, that would make sense that there is a, you know, that they're going to give a break to the government. Um, that doesn't seem, you know, that's, to me, business as usual. Yeah, but I, well, see, I see the article you see, and what I see is, is that the post office is giving them a break in price because they do so much volume business with them. Yeah. Well. Yeah. I agree. So, you, so once do. again, Phil, everybody yeah. drink. Yeah. Well, you know, it's it's an interesting article. Uh, what, well, obviously, not matter. interesting enough but, for you to read it. Well, you're the one that says that the government should be fair on all on all sides, and what they're saying in this article is that the brick and mortar places are going out of business because they're not getting the same deal. They don't you get the same deal because they don't ship. Well, this is on this is cool. on the shipping cost from the post office. If all those brick and mortars wanted to start shipping, I'm sure if they were large enough, they'd get a break in volume as well. No, it's not just that. It says uh, there's an accountability and enhancement act that made it illegal for the post office to now price. You, now you're just reading stuff. It's cost. Come come below back to cost. me tomorrow after you've read the whole article and then explain it to me. Because uh, as I look at it and I'm scanning it. I see that the reason why that happens is because they're they're dealing in volume. I mean, I was saying the other day that uh, I am bothered by the fact that I have to rely on the fucking post office for my deliveries from Amazon because they keep fucking up. But it, there was a time when Amazon shipped everything UPS, some mm-hmm. of them FedEx, very few by the post office. Somewhere along the line, the post office made a deal with Amazon because of the volume they do, the incredible volume they do, to give them a break in price. And so now everything that comes here comes through the post office and madden- in a very maddening way. They are so inefficient, it, it blows my mind, you know. Uh, and, and, um, but that's what that's about, Phil. And well, that's, City, uh, Citigroup says that if it's the not costs like, were failing, it's not, like, it's not like the government is saying, "Okay, here's a check for a hundred a dollar forty six for every box you shipped last month." No, it that's not what like. it's about. All right. Uh, all right. Yeah, I, you know, the, you know what they're what they're saying is that Citigroup uh, estimated that the costs were fair uh, were fairly allocated. That the cost would be a dollar forty-six more to deliver each Amazon package. Mm-hmm. But Amazon probably said to the post office, "You want our business? Here's what we're willing to pay for it." Yeah. Okay. Now the story changes. It isn't like they're getting a dollar. You you came on here and said, "Do you know the government is giving Amazon a dollar forty-six for every box they deliver?" Well, pretty reasonable. I see an article from the Wall Street Journal, and it says uh, that they're getting a dollar forty-six subsidy. The, you the, know, the, on every box. Oh boy. When you open your box, you get a check for dollar forty-six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> see, dollar forty-six. That's right? the same yeah. article that I'm looking at, and it doesn't even say it that way. <laughs> Probably give it to your pennies. <laughs> You know, All right. Well, they, I'm, I'm looking at it. I that mean, way. Uh, look. If I, if I if I were Amazon and I'm shipping what a million boxes a day or whatever, and I've got to ship those things out, and I'm the post office, I'm going to say, we want that business. What is it going to take to get that business? Well, we can't send it at your prices. What if we give you about a dollar forty-six off of every shipment? And they go, that sounds pretty good to us. 
and now um, you're in business with each other. Uh, I'm, I'm reading this. It says the uh, arrangement is an underappreciated accident of history. The post office has long had a legal monopoly to deliver first class mail or non urgent letters. Uh, the exclusive exclusivity comes with universal service obligation to provide to all Americans at a uniform price and quality. This communication service helps knit the vast country okay, okay, together okay. and is why the Postal Service exists. So what what they're doing is is they're taking advantage of something that should be available. What you're doing is you're reading an article while you're on the air and you're not getting oh. the full gist of it. Yes, uh, Jeff has his hand up. Jesus. While you were just talking about the post office and how they, they've been in operation, I think for... Hundreds of years? Over 200. Yeah, and you know what? I don't think they're changing their, their, their strategy very much. I think, though, that there is competition and that once in a while they want to compete with them. And they want to keep uh, a certain uh, percentage of their business from big corporations. But isn't and, that uh, now the post office is supposed to belong to the people? It's it's part of the government and it's a service that the government provides to us. And so what they're saying is is that it should be fair to all those that use it, and no one should get an unfair advantage. Well, obviously Amazon is. They're not getting an unfair <laughs> advantage. They're getting an yeah. advantage. <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. As, uh, let me ask you this. If tomorrow you started Phil's House of Rugs, okay, <coughs> and somehow you became the only place that people wanted to go to be able to get a good price on carpeting, all right? I, and uh, now you shipped a million of those every day, uh, bolts of carpet, whatever you call those things, uh, yeah. to people because they were ordering them in such quantity because your prices are lower than anybody else's. Don't you think you could go to the post office and say, hey, listen, I uh, want to make a deal on this thing. You know, I want to change this thing up a little bit. Don't you think that would be a, a, a That's not possible? the way the post office is supposed to work. Maybe that's the way UPS works and it's the way uh, other uh, private... Well, why shouldn't the post work? office work that way? The I'm post office... The post office... The post office... Wait a minute. The post office yeah, is trying to stay in business. So yeah. when, if they want Amazon's business, they don't want it to go to UPS. They don't want it to go to FedEx. They want the majority of it to be USPS. Then they're going to make a deal. I'm hey, sorry. Compare that they're, they're, to fire and police services that are also uh, oh, provided uh, by the uh, government. If, if fire and police services are entirely... Wait a minute. Why, if I have a lot of fires, does that wait mean I get a better no, deal from no, the fire department? Minute. How can you compare the fire and police department <laughs> to the I'm post like office? Church, yeah. Because they're all g supplied by the government. It's oh. the same bullshit that's going to happen with health care. Huh. Hey, well, yeah, Tim has something to say. Tim. Okay. Two yeah. things. One, the, the post office gets no money from the federal government or taxes. Two, did you see who wrote the article? Uh, yeah, it was... Uh, a guy named uh, Josh Sandblut. And uh, he own, he works for a man, money management company that owns a lot of stock in FedEx. It's a commentary. <laughs> How do you know it's, that? It, it, it's, it's, uh, it's fake news. How do you know that? Well, he, he at the just... bottom of the article. Oh, it... At the bottom of the article. Yeah, read the last line. Just read it out loud. All right. Uh, oh, Sam Blute is co-president of Greenhaven Associates, a money management firm that owns FedEx Common Stock. Very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Very interesting. Oh, well, you know, hey, who, who owns the Wall Street Journal, Phil? Yeah, but, yeah, but FedEx is a private, uh, not a private, well, it is a private uh, company. The post office is a private, non is a private quasi-government that gets no government funds. Oh, by the way, is that article, I just got rid of it here, is that article an opinion article? Uh, uh, it's a commentary. It's a commentary? It's it's in it's their commentary paper. section. Well, Phil, Which you've really, it? really gone wrong this yeah, it's time. It's a commentary. How do you like that? Yeah, yeah. All right, I'll okay. take a drink. Uh, okay, you take <laughs> a drink, yeah. Yeah, oh, right. yeah what were you going to say, uh, 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 uh Oh, God, my mind is just blank. Tony. You know what I was going to ask? Let's say if I went into, we went into Phil's shop to buy rugs. And let's say, Alex, you had six houses and they were big. Yeah. Wouldn't he get a better price than my little apartment? Probably. 
So then, what's but, the difference, like Alex? I, well, I you but, know I I wouldn't buy a rug I wouldn't buy a rug from Phil when I can buy him from Amazon and get get him <laughs> yeah, delivered free. Yeah, don't, yeah, like yeah you have to install them yourself. <laughs> yeah. Don't put any money. Down. Hey, I, 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 I bet I, I bet I can get a book somewhere and learn how to install them. Yeah, yeah. I remember when we got rug jocks. They gave her a rake to rake the rock when in the seventh. Does anybody buy wall to wall carpeting anymore? Yeah, no, it's what? about fifty percent no. of all the areas that are covered in the home. Really? Because so, there yeah, is so, not a single rug at wall to wall carpet in this apartment, and there never will be. Because I've got such great, got I've got guys. such great look. Uh, how, how, oh, wait a minute, We're tr uh, Jeff's trying to show us something. Wood, there it is. Okay, the deal, the deal with uh, wood, and especially in New York, uh, before, in the 50s, yeah. all, uh, FHA required that all buildings, up, up to the 50s, required that all buildings be built with a hardwood floor uh, as, a, as the finished floor because they didn't have plywood. And in the old days, the way the joists were, that there was space between the plywood, uh, between the uh, boards that yeah. went across the joists. Yeah. So... You had to put a hardwood floor or a wood floor on top well, of it. Well, they do that parquet bullshit. Right. But uh, there, was no, there was no plywood. And, and, you know, and a lot of the high rises in New York, they had concrete floors. Uh, mm. uh, and so they would glue the parquet to the concrete. I don't know what you say about that. It's also one of my favorite margarines. So. Yeah. So uh, anyway, uh, after in homes, after they invented plywood, uh, then the FHA said you could have a plywood floor with carpeting on top, but that that's when carpeting got really popular in the late fifties, sixties, and seventies. Okay. All right, this is getting boring. Uh, uh, you know, I mean, I can't I can't think of a more snoozing discussion than parquet versus uh, wood slab well, floors or whatever. Know, I mean, carpet's my okay. life. <laughs> yeah, but no, no. He would never sell our mother anything. She loves rugs. You, your your life is covering wood. What were you saying, Brian? <laughs> I said if I wanted to look at carpet, if I want to look at carpet, I'll just go on Pornhub and watch lesbian porn. Yeah, good, exactly. <laughs> hey, right. Carpet should match the drapes. Really? Uh, he's carrying on. Since when? Yeah. Since when, Bill? Uh, well, uh, 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 Patrick's been there a little bit quiet. Anything to say about this? I mean, are you? Are, are you bothered, Patrick, that the uh, you're the other Republican in this group? Uh, are you bothered by the fact that the that the post office is subsidizing every delivery that they do for Amazon, or do you understand it? The only thing that bothers me is their lack of receipts, and you know, I mean, if they're going to give a discount, then make it worth our money you know deliver the fucking thing on time or deliver it exactly <laughs> exactly that's my problem with it it isn't so much that it's a they're subsidizing it i mean if you're getting something for the money then it it's fine you know um but at this point i i would i would just call bullshit on it because the problem i have is like me if i have a package delivered mm-hmm might be on my porch, or they may deliver it to the uh, management office. Mm -hmm. At which point, I got to go retrieve the fucking thing, or I may not get it at all, and I got to call the post office, and they forgot to put a you know, a, you weren't home thing, you know. Well, what the fuck? So yeah, that's where I got a problem. If they're gonna subsidize that, yeah. Well, here here's the thing. Number one, never fuck with old people. And here's the reason why. Because we have all the time in the world to, to make your oh, life yeah. miserable. Okay. <laughs> so uh, oh, yeah. uh, uh, what I've done lately is every time the post office fucks up here, uh, I call Amazon and make a complaint saying, you know, when are you people going to stop using the post office and start using people who can or get them to reliably deliver this stuff because I would say at least 25 of my packages don't get delivered when they're supposed to be delivered. And uh, every time that happens, I call Amazon now, and you know what they do? They give me a $5 credit. So I'm thinking of just calling every time to get that $5 credit. You know? Yeah. 
Sounds I, I, I used to complain that my luggage uh, looked uh, beat up on the airlines, and then they give me a, uh, a positive space upgrade to first class. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Continental always did. I must have had about nine of them. Yeah. One time I held a protest at, uh, at the airline that I was supposed to be traveling on because it was during that time where, where planes never took off when they were supposed to take off. And it was suspicious yeah. because what it was is the full, planes weren't full, so they'd wait till they had enough people put them on another plane later on so they could fill the plane, right? right. And so I started um, uh, protesting it at the airport. We want management. We want management. And I had this other woman who was... Uh, who was protesting with me. And when I got on the plane, they said, any more trouble from you? And, and, and you know, we're going to maybe have to throw you off the plane. And I said, uh, well, I plan to make trouble. They said, well, then we're going to have to put you in first class. <laughs> they put me in first class because I was making trouble. This is where we yeah. can watch you. And by the way, would you like the shrimp? You know, I mean, it was really, and, real and the best yeah. part of this story, the best part of this story is I get to New York, suddenly I get a call from uh, a friend back in San Francisco, and they say, y y uh, you're in Herb Cain today. And I said, what for? They said, were you protesting at the airport? I said, yeah, it says you were protesting at the airport with your friend and perhaps girlfriend, Deborah Winger. <laughs> and it turned out the woman that I was yelling and screaming with was Deborah Winger. I didn't even recognize her. But everybody in San Francisco thought I was fucking Deborah Winger. Yes, Brian. I was just going to say that airline, that airline's uh, interpretation of a spanking. Is a hand job. Yeah. yeah you know, yeah, Deborah yes. Winger, uh, lately she looks like she was ridden hard and put away wet. You know, uh, she's she's aged quite a bit. Well, so of all of us, Phil, you look. Uh, this, you, 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 I'm, oh, the, I'm, oh. I'm the picture of Dorian oh, Gray. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you look like a fucking bowling ball. Yeah, no. In the case, of, in your case, the picture of Dorian Gray, the picture gets younger, sure. you <laughs> get older. Yes, uh, I've got, uh, yes. I've had her in the last yeah, ten years, so I'm not exempt. Yes, Jeff. Okay. One well, one time, I I went to Argentina. Uh, to visit some friends and things like that. And uh, s somebody asked about the product I was working on and things like that. Yeah. And they said, well, can you ship some of this to us and show it to us? We'd like to see it. And they were surgical instruments and things like that. Yeah. So I, I, I have them mailed to the Argentinian post office. Right. And I assume it came by airplane to get there. Otherwise, it would just take forever. So I get there, and I go into the post office to pick it up, and the guy says, you have to give me a tip. <laughs> really? <laughs> well, that's, that's one way to get this stuff. <laughs> you should, hey, Jeff, you should have bought a dildo at a fucking adult or give him a, and cut the tip off using a razor blade or something. Stay here. Here's your fucking tip, cocksucker. Go fuck hey, yourself. Hey, this, uh, this friend of mine, I was reading a, uh, he tagged a Facebook article, and another diver that we know who's an underwater photographer was in, uh, was in Australia and was going to, uh, uh, I think, Tahiti, not Tahiti, uh, in one of those islands, Fuji. Yeah. And uh, what happened was Air New Zealand, who she loves, uh, normally not a problem. Uh, he says it's a great airline, but what happened was they all of a sudden, without telling her, said that you're limited in weight uh, on your on two pieces of luggage, and that's it. And if it can't go over that weight, they told her to take her equipment, put it in storage. She's been traveling for eight or nine months, or going around the world shooting for magazines. She's got all her dive gear. She's got her uh, her camera equipment. Yeah. And there's no way it's going to weigh 48 kilos uh, total for two bags. And they also won't let her take ca carry on more than seven. Oh, but kilos. Phil, Phil, that's business. They have every right to do that, don't they? Have a well, right to make a profit off of luggage. They, they, she offered to pay, and they wouldn't let her pay. They said it's a weight restricted uh, uh, flight, and even though they didn't tell her that when she booked the ticket. Uh, it's a weight know. restricted flight, and let the, and yet they'd probably let Chris Christie ride for free. Well, you know, she's, I mean, she's five foot, a hundred pounds, 
And, you know, you look at all these people that weigh 30 kilos more than her and, you know, and they're busting her chops over a little bit of uh, carry on. So and then what she did was she kept her hotel room a little longer, emptied her carry on in the hotel room, went in and checked in with her bags when they weighed them and then went back to the hotel, filled them up. But when she went to the lounge, they weighed them again. Uh, selectively. You're losing me with this story. Um, and you're also well, making me drowsy. I know it's a charge. But anyway, uh, you know, this is the way the airlines are, are, are handling it. They won't even let you pay for it. Uh, and you're right. Chris Christie could get on the flight and, you know, have one carry on and he's got no problem. Yeah. Uh, but anybody else, uh, you know, you can't take that. Yeah. And, and they weren't weighing everybody's stuff, only selectively. I see. Okay. Anyway, um, so uh, what else is happening? Anything? You know, uh, we got uh, Donald Trump Jr. cares about that. You know, um, no, you know, I I I I, I was uh, I think I was saying last I got night. What? What? what oh, really? Tony has something to offer for a change. Yes, Tony. T today's the 40th anniversary of the 77 blackout. Is that anything? No. No, not <laughs> really. Not really. Let's let's all turn our lights off for a minute here in in tri tribute to the 1977 blackout. You mean the one where everybody decided it was time to loot? Yeah, that was the yeah. one. Yeah. Was up and, and and also that was the summer was of Sam. Christmas that was the summer of Sam, wasn't it? That the uh, yeah, summer was, Sam yeah. was uh, was running rampant. You remember yeah, that, don't you, uh, Mark? Yeah, old Sam old. Berkowitz, uh, Berkowitz, David Berkowitz. David I Berkowitz. Got him on a parking ticket. Hey, talking about David Berkowitz, they just got two guys in Bucks County, uh, uh, Pennsylvania, that uh, killed four people, buried them on the farm. I think it was one guy. Oh no, no, God. they just found the second guy. They found a second guy? Yeah, another guy is uh, is involved. Because I know they got the uh, the first guy. Was, yeah. uh, it was uh, He buried him on his parents' property. Ooh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. I got Cheap. the bird and the dog in the garden. Yeah. Were they gay? Something. I don't know. Like, these four guys, these these, these four uh, males that were buried, right? Yeah. Okay. But because uh, I, I saw bits and pieces. That you're that. you're thinking there's something gay happening there, right? Your gaydar is out on that one, is it, Brian? Well, you know, what, it's certainly. I mean, look at uh, what was his name? Uh, something Kunanen or whatever. Johnny Versace, that old. Thing. Yeah, yeah. That guy was. That guy was. Uh, that guy was a uh, fruit loop. So, uh, Freeman Queen. By the way, in case you've not heard this program before, Brian can say that because Brian is one of that tribe. Yeah. So, well, you know. It was cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs as well as Fruit Loops. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's just what makes me think that, that that's what this angle is. And also, uh, I, I heard that it, it, although it's rare or just uncommon, but serial killers, which is what I'm assuming what these two are, uh, yeah. they they can and sometimes do kill in pairs. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, they, they I, I read that they found a second guy. Uh, they arrested a second guy who uh, uh, supposedly was complicit with it. Complicit? Or, they, well, he was one of the, one of the perpetrators. Yeah, well, this guy, this guy isn't going to get executed for it because the state made a deal that if he confessed that he wouldn't get the death penalty. So basically, he's responsible for the death of four people. He's not going to get the death penalty. Do so. you think he'll get killed in jail? I don't know what will happen to this guy. I mean, it doesn't really... Do I care? You know? Huh. Uh, yes, uh, uh, Jeff. I, I think if the guy is convicted, he's going to go and, and have to work in the post office in Harlem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. At, at a at dollar forty-seven a box. Yeah. Forty-six. Forty-six a box. I see. Okay. Um, so the guy who wrote that article has stock in FedEx. Oh my God! You know, whatever happened to the days when uh, when the Wall Street Journal vetted the stuff that was in there? But you read it, and you didn't read it as a commentary. You read it as an article. Yeah, because yeah. Uh, I went from the headline down. The commentary line was above oh. uh, the whole thing. Uh, yes, so, uh, yes, Patrick. They, May have been a commentary, but it sounds like that is factual information within the commentary. So, you know, you, you can't argue with it in that sense. If, if hey, in fact, City Bank. 
Well, it, it's somebody who's pissed because the thing he's got stock in doesn't get the dollar forty six right. per box right. cut, you right. know. Uh, but then again, FedEx probably isn't willing to make the same kind of deal with uh, Amazon that the post office was willing to do. And when you when you're shipping as much as Amazon, and I I don't know how many how many boxes a day they they ship, but uh, I think when I say a million, I may not be off base. I live in an apartment complex with about 100 units, and I walk down the hall, and in front of every door, there's two, three boxes from Amazon. In the morning, when I go down to get my car, uh, it's right where the recycle is, and the boxes from Amazon are stacked up to the ceiling. They're gone in the afternoon, and the next morning, they're stacked up again. Uh, they you know? are, okay, you ready? I just found the number. Yeah. How, how much do you think? Uh, so many... Uh, uh, Give me a give me a figure, uh, Patrick. Um, what? Two million. What? What? What are, what are you saying? What are you saying? Seven point five million. Seven point five million a day. Packages. Day. Yeah. Uh huh. How about how about you, Mike? Two point five. No, you're all wrong so far. Thirty. You're uh, huh? Thirty million. No, this is per day. Per yeah, day. so you know they ship a lot of shit. Uh, they, it's one six one million six hundred thousand packages a day, six hundred and eight wow. million six hundred and eight million packages a year. So if oh. you're the post office, and by the way, Phil, the difference between the police department, the fire department, and the post office is the post office is run like a business. It doesn't get paid by the government to operate. It operates off its own revenues. Okay, you can't say you can't say that about the police and the fire department. But wait a minute, let me finish. Let me finish. And so, when you're doing this, when you're when you're when you're out there and you're trying to keep this business going, so it it does make a profit or it does break even, uh, you're going to make deals with somebody who sends 1.6 million packages a day. How come my stamps say U.S. postage? How come, you know, uh, you know, uh, you're telling me I'm saying that the post office and and Mark, I think you didn't you bring it up? The post office uh, doesn't doesn't is not in business to make a profit. Uh, It is it is in business to uh, when they raise the rates on postal rates so that they can break even. Yeah. Uh, so, but you can't. But you can't. Rates, but, but you, Alex, they're going to raise the rates so yeah. that they could give a discount to Amazon. So we're paying for that. No, subsidy. they're not raising the rates because they give a discount to Amazon because they're getting all that business from Amazon, which probably keeps our rates down. Well, you can then you lose. No, it doesn't keep your rates. Yes, down. it does keep your rates down because there's 1.6 million packages a day they're handling, perhaps. Uh, that otherwise would have gone to other companies and would not be going in their pockets. Yeah, well... Uh, Boy, you're a lousy, you're a lousy they're business losing man. Money. You're a lousy businessman if you can't figure I'm that one out. saying they're losing money on the Amazon deals. Uh, to, wow. And so, therefore... They're not it's losing kind of, money on uh, the Amazon uh, deals? Well, it's under their cost. They, uh, according to what I read... It said that uh, if they uh, that the gov- that the no, post no. office was would not you allowed. Please, would you please amend what you said? What you glanced? Okay, go ahead. <laughs> uh, it, it said that the post office department was not allowed to lose money uh, on on shipments, and but if they're they're losing, they're getting they're, you know there's a subsidy because uh, from the wait government. Minute, wait a minute, Jeff is going no 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 no. Go ahead, Jeff. As I remember, post office often sells things on different levels of shipping. Well, it and depends, it, yeah. And the there are certain things that that we can get, which is a, a lower class. Bulk mail. Printing, uh, whatever. Yeah, bulk there mail, things like no that. no profit there. All my tapes that, no that all the tapes that Damien has been sending me have been sent book rate. Right. Which used to be really cheap. Now I pay like about ten bucks, twenty bucks a box. But it, you know, it's cheaper than if we were to send them first class or whatever. Yes, uh, Mike. Does it depend how much the weight of the bulk is? No. Uh, yeah, in bulk mail. I, th- I, th- uh, I think I think it's no more no more than a hundred pounds or something. 
for no, no, that's, yes. that's what's on your book rate. He the book said rate. bulk rate. Oh, bulk rate. Now this is this is bulk rate's different. Bulk is something you do if you're a, you know if you're a business and you're sending out flyers. So yes, yes. If, I would send ten thousand letters yeah, yeah. at a time, yeah. and as long as there was two hundred at least to a zip code, yeah. then I could mail them bulk rate, and it was cheaper. Jeff had his hand up. Well, one thing about uh, different zones really changed the cost yeah. at uh, the Fed right now. So if you're sending the same letters to Chicago as compared to somebody else who's uh, selling it to Brooklyn from New York, it's a tremendously different price. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know... Well, that's, yeah, that's a good point, Jeff said, because Jeff, listen to this, Alex. If we use UPS to work, and they go by dimensions, and some of our customers who live, who have stores out on the West Coast, they'll buy from the manufacturer bigger deliveries out there because of the freight difference from New York to Los Angeles. Tim, what, do you, what, do, you, Tim, what so, do you think about all of this? You don't, you don't have any problem with the post office uh, uh, giving them a cheaper rate because they're shipping so much, do you? Tim? Oh, I think Tim has lost us again. He might be muted. Phil put him to see what Now, you know, what, what it is with the bulk rate, uh, yeah. let's say I was going to send 10,000 letters. So Mail America would send me sacks of the letters already split up, each sack for each zip code. And then I would deliver them to the post office so that I didn't have to pay for them to come from West Virginia where they were printed. And, and, and so I would pay, you know, just a freight. It showed up at my store, and then I take it over to the bulk center, and they would uh, bulk mail it to the local zip codes. Right, but there's always uh, been there's always been, for instance, businesses have always gotten a break in price on a lot of uh, a lot of things like mass mailings, for instance. Yeah, I mean, you don't you think you don't think that when Costco sends out to all their fifty million customers or whatever that stupid magazine that you get every month for your membership, that they're paying like full price to mail that to everybody. Yeah. You think so? No. No, they're not. I said they're not. You know. Yeah, but, you know, they're doing a, a, a mass mailing of one type of piece uh, with the Amazon. It's going to individuals, all of those boxes. And, uh, you know, it's not a, it's not a, a, a first-class envelope, number 10 envelope. It's, uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff that weighs a lot, yeah. 16 pounds, 20 pounds. Well, the other day, the other day on Amazon, it was Prime Day on Amazon. Oh, did anybody yeah. see that? I did. I, I, I don't remember. know exactly what Prime Day was, but there were bargains. And so they were offering their Echo Mm. Which is a hundred and seventy nine dollar item for eighty nine bucks, so I bought one. Oh, is it good? No, it hasn't gotten here yet. And it's coming by oh. USPS, so I don't expect it for the next seven oh. weeks. It's supposed to be good. So now if you have this echo, isn't that just like slapback which you get for free? No, 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 no. <laughs> the echo, uh it's just I don't know why I even bought it. I really don't. And I said, you know, uh, these day in this day and age I have to watch my pennies, right? Uh, should I spend the $89? And then I said, you know, day's going to come when I'm down to my last buck. And I'm going to say, I really need money. And if I hadn't spent that $89, I'd be in better shape right now. I don't think that I day's going to come. What? Good. I see that all the time. Yeah. I, there's so many things that I've bought in my life that yeah. I wish I never did. Am I at the end of my life going to say, gee, I wish I had that $89? I just wish I... You know, the worst thing is, is if I die before I spend all my money. Exactly. That's the part yes. that Spending really bothers money. me. That's I mean, that's there would be... Likely what's going to happen. Uh, you, well, it would, wouldn't it be better if we knew when we were going to die and then we could spend our money accordingly, you know? Hey, uh, Alex. Yeah. Alex, this, uh, yeah, you said that before. I didn't get a chance to opine on that, but we had a conversation like that when I was going to truck driving school back in uh, the fall and winter of 2009 and 2010. Yeah. And uh, we, we, we agreed that uh, we, somebody uh, wisely stated that that would actually be a bad idea. Because do you realize how many people would be going out raping people, pillaging, looting? Oh, I'm going to buy tomorrow? Well, fuck it. I'm going to fuck every woman. I'm going to spread her legs. I'm going to force my seed in her. And Or if you're a woman. Oh, I I'm love your descriptions. Treating me like shit. I'm going I'm to die tomorrow. I'm going to hit him over the fucking head with a frying pan and, and stab my kids with a knife because they're ungrateful little you know, you know, You know what really I, I love about Brian is his flowery way of speaking. 
Yeah. It has a certain rather interesting poetry to it. It sounds like a little purge. angry. It'll be like the purge angry. times 10, bil- 10 million. Yeah, yeah. Or 7 billion. Well, you know, that's a discussion for another day, that if you knew you only had about a week to live, is there anybody you'd kill? Oh, yeah. <laughs> laundry list of fucking cocksuckers I'd like to put under the ground. Yeah, well, let's not, let's not, let's not name any of them. Because I don't, I don't want, I, I don't want Homeland Security knocking on my door tomorrow, you know. Yes, and then I have to say, wanting to make a name for myself. So would you please report the individual who said he'd kill his thoughts? Yeah. Fuck you. Anyway, well, with that, with that, it's a feel-free Friday. So uh, it's a feel-free Friday tomorrow night. Well, let, yeah. that, let that be a lesson to all of you to call me tomorrow night. Right. Yeah. Give me this. He's, he's rubbing off on me. I'm actually enjoying his company. Oh, really? Okay. I do. I don't know. Why. All right. So, so, so you're the one. Hey, we gotta go. Uh, everybody, give a big, uh, give a big wave goodbye to everybody, and uh, we'll see you again. Hopefully, except for Phil tomorrow. Same. Okay. But what happened? Oh, there it is. There's there's the music. Okay. Let me just uh, put me on here. Hold on a second, folks. I gotta go to my picture, and then I gotta hang up on all these people. And then I gotta close down my Skype because if I don't close down my Skype, the next show can't use it. Okay? Hey, that's it for tonight. I'm Alex Bennett. I hope you've enjoyed the program. I've enjoyed doing it. And uh, uh, I'll see you tomorrow. Same time, same station in life. Uh, The uh, intersection is next with Jack and Amy. And after that, at 1 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time, it's Connections. Uh, I'll see you tomorrow, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, should you happen upon her, tell her I love her, okay? Okay.